Today, we arrived at the Taiwan town in Pingtan Island, Fujian, China, which features a duty-free market for Taiwanese goods. There aren't many people here today, so we're heading in to take a look. The market is almost empty, with many shops closed down, leaving only a few still open. Fujian's Pingtan Island, which faces Taiwan across the sea, is the closest point on the mainland to Taiwan. The Chinese government once promoted it with promises of investing 100 million yuan per day into Pingtan. To attract Taiwanese businesses, the island has long offered tax breaks, subsidies, and residency assistance to Taiwanese investors. The duty-free market for Taiwanese goods was created as part of these efforts. However, due to the rising geopolitical tensions and economic concerns, this Taiwan town, once bustling with activity, has now become nearly deserted, with only a few stores still in operation. Apart from a handful of tourists, the market appears largely empty. I suggest people not to visit Taiwan town. It's particularly far and lacks any vibrancy. It's practically deserted. According to a report by the Financial Times, a shop owner named Chen revealed that over the past few years, due to the pandemic and other issues, Taiwanese business people have stopped coming. The director of the Taiwan Study Program at the University of Nottingham, Chen Yi Li, said, no matter how much the Chinese government promotes this economic zone, the acceptance rate among Taiwanese business people seem to be low. She added that companies are worried about rising labor cost, competition with local firms, and the impact of the U.S.-China trade war. A Taiwanese businessman attending a conference in Fuzhou mentioned that due to the multiple concerns about the business environment in mainland China, Taiwanese businesses are looking for alternatives. He said if they don't return to Taiwan, they'll invest in Southeast Asia. Beyond economic factors, the darker side of China's officialdom is deterring many Taiwanese investors. Corruption and opaque administrative procedures create significant uncertainty for Taiwanese businesses operating in the mainland. The man in the video is Zhang Yongfu, a native of Changhua, Taiwan. In July 2005, he married a resident of Heyang City, Hunan Province. In 2013, he invested in Qingdong County, Heyang, only to find himself swindled by local officials who colluded to seize his assets, leaving him financially devastated with no recourse other than to appeal for help through social media. We hired someone to build a factory for us. The factory was never completed. And in the end, not only did we lose the building, the land and factory were taken from us. We were left with nothing. Where else in the world would you encounter such a situation? Our family has nowhere left to turn. We worked hard for nearly 10 years to establish a business in Qingdong Henyang, investing over 10 million yuan, and now it's all for nothing. The illegal interest alone amounted to over 6 million yuan, pushing our family into the abyss. Zhang also shared our newly built buildings were seized. 32 acres of land we purchased for 3.11 million yuan were taken away. Zhang Yongfu revealed that in May 2015, they hired local village chief Li Zhonghua to build the factory. The construction remains unfinished and they were subsequently defrauded by officials and the court. Zhang further stated at the end of 2016, Li Zhonghua sued us demanding 7.84 million yuan in construction fees and a staggering 24% annual interest. After deducting the payments we had already made, even by Li's own calculation, we only owed him 5.32 million yuan. However, judges Zhen Hui and Zhou Hong from Qingdong County and Heyang City courts treated an invalid contract as valid in their rulings fully supporting all terms in the voided agreement, especially the 24% interest rate. The 5.38 million yuan we spent on construction and renovations was also lost. Even the factory, transformer, air conditioners and office furniture were auctioned off by the court. To this day, we still owe Li Zhonghua 1.64 million yuan. Many online commenters expressed sympathy for Zhang and his wife, saying, Corrupt local officials are ruthless. They won't care where you're from. Others remarked, if mainlanders are subject to forced evictions, what chances does a Taiwanese businessman have? 
Zhang's case isn't unique. In 2000, Ping Tung businessman Lu Hongjie invested over 30 million yuan to establish an ebony art museum in Chengdu, China, collecting thousands of ebony pieces and becoming a recognized authority in the field. The museum officially opened to the public in 2011. However, this successful Taiwanese entrepreneur was met with sudden misfortune. Several months ago, Lu returned to Taiwan and mentioned to friends and family his plans to transfer his substantial assets from China back to Taiwan and how he encountered numerous obstacles. Lu unexpectedly passed away in an accident whilst working on a suspended ebony object and was swiftly cremated leading his family to question the true circumstances of his death. Lu's vast ebony-related assets and business operations in mainland China are highly valuable, but these assets may now be at risk of confiscation by the Chinese government due to his sudden death. Some analysts suggest that mainland China prioritized rule by individuals over rule by law, meaning that successfully transferring funds and assets out of China requires completely legitimate and thorough procedures. However, many Chinese officials exploit such situations for personal gain, leaving Taiwanese businessmen without legal protection when issues arise. In recent years, many Taiwanese business people have sought to invest and grow in mainland China, hoping to tap into its vast market to expand their businesses. However, the risks faced by Taiwanese businesses in China are gradually being revealed, with many encountering unjust treatment. The chairman of the well-known Taiwanese betting brand shared the story of a Taiwanese businessman who manufactured mouse components, including steel balls and copper tubes, and held a significant global market share. However, with mouse scrolls wheels switching to infrared technology and the market shrinking, the businessman decided to withdraw from China and return to Taiwan. When trying to sell his factory and land, he received notice from the local government that the land would be reclaimed and the factory would have to be demolished. His hard-earned money vanished almost overnight. According to Radio Free Asia, businessman Wang Xiang returned to Taiwan's offshore island of Qingmen with his wife and children in 2019 due to the pandemic, only to find that in November 2022, his environmental protection factory in Xinjiang had been unexpectedly demolished without warning, wiping out years of effort in an instant. Wang Xiang said, I had paid the 20-year land usage compensation in 2015, which secured my land rights for another 50 years. I only established my current environmental protection and energy saving company in 2015 with the factory holding environmental equipment. While I was in Taiwan, I had only one employee looking after the warehouse. The direct financial loss is 10 million yuan and the indirect loss includes the remaining 47 years of land use rights. Wang complained to the Chinese government, but there has been no response, leaving him deeply disappointed. However, Wang is grateful for seeking help from the Taiwanese government. According to him, relevant departments are actively communicating with mainland authorities. He plans to seek over 40 million yuan in compensation from the Chinese side, including compensation for the forced land seizures and the losses of his factory and equipment. He said, I hope they will give me a reasonable explanation and restore justice. Wang bluntly pointed out that this reflects the difference between the systems on both sides of the strait. In China, it's impossible to seek justice from central officials. He said, this is the difference between democracy and communism. In Taiwan, if people have issues, the government will help. But the CCP only cares about its own interest. The people mean nothing. When asked what lessons he learned from his 30 years of business in China, he candidly said that everyone had been chasing profits in the past. China's economic development once needed Taiwan's help which is why the policies were friendly towards Taiwanese businesses. He did indeed make money, but when the situation changed, there was no protection. He said the Chinese government can accuse you of any crime and find any excuse. Recently, China's Supreme Court people, Supreme People's Procuratorate, Ministry of Public Security, Ministry of State Security and Ministry of Justice jointly issued a notice outlining the legal measures to punish those involved in Taiwan independence activities. The notice states that leaders of such activities will face life imprisonment or sentences of more than 10 years and threatens a death penalty for those involved in particular severe or egregious cases. In response to Beijing's so-called new measures against Taiwan independence, the Taiwanese government upgraded its travel advisory for mainland China. 
Hong Kong and the Macau to Orange. Avoid non-essential travel as of June 27th, advising the public to avoid non-essential travel to those regions. Reuters reporters citing four insiders that following Beijing's announcement of these measures against those involved in Taiwan independence activities, including threats of the death penalty, some foreign companies operating in mainland China are considering relocating their Taiwanese employees. One of the insiders is a lawyer with direct knowledge of the situation, while the other two are corporate executives. Attorney James Zimmerman, a partner at Perkins Coe in Beijing, said several companies have come to us to assess the risk to their personnel. Zimmerman, citing confidentiality, declined to reveal the names of the companies or their industries. Jim Zimmerman said the companies are still concerned that there may be some grey areas, such as whether a benign social media post or voting for a particular political party or candidate in Taiwan elections could be interpreted as engaging in pro-independence activities. Two company executives told Reuters that some companies operating in China have already held meetings with their employees to discuss safety concerns while working on the mainland. Due to the sensitivity of the issue, these executives requested anonymity. Another source who has been briefed on the situation told Reuters that some Taiwanese workers on the mainland have been offered and accepted options to leave China provided their companies. Recent data from Taiwan's government shows that as of 2022, around 177,000 Taiwanese employees were working on the Chinese mainland. Given the shared language, culture, and ethnicity between Taiwan and the mainland, many multinational companies have been eager to hire Taiwanese workers for mainland positions. Many Taiwanese workers are employed by Taiwanese businesses in mainland China. According to the government estimates, since 1991, Taiwanese businesses have invested over $200 billion in the mainland. From 2010 to the present, the government has approved over 45,000 Taiwanese investments in China, totaling over $206 billion playing a significant role in China's rapid rise as the world's second largest economy. However, after former U.S. President Donald Trump launched the U.S.-China trade war in 2018, Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen introduced policies in 2019 offering tax cuts and incentives for land purchases and factory construction to encourage Taiwanese businesses to return home. As a result, Taiwanese investments in mainland China has seen a downward trend in recent years, hitting a new low of $3 billion last year, a decline of nearly $11.6 billion compared to 2010. By early February of this year, the total amount of returning Taiwanese investments had surpassed $67 billion. Additionally, as Taiwan strengthens its bilateral trade ties with India, many Taiwanese businesses are relocating the supply chain from mainland China to India, casting further uncertainty over China's already struggling economy. According to reports, James Huang, chairman of the Taiwan External Trade Development Council, stated that in the five years leading up to 2023, the U.S.-China trade conflict has significantly increased Taiwanese companies' foreign direct investment in India, reaching over $665 million. In stark contrast, Taiwanese companies invested less than $277 million in India from 2006 to 2017. Evidence shows that Taiwanese companies are moving their supply chains out of China and rebuilding them in India. This year, Taiwan's PSMC partnered with India's Tata Group to build India's first semiconductor chip packaging plant in the western state of Gujarat, taking advantage of India's $10 billion incentive program. James Huang said, We plan to recruit Indian students and talent to Taiwan for semiconductor training, which will pave the way for future collaboration. Huang noted that the focus of Taiwan's supply chain shifts currently lies in the smartphone assembly and footwear manufacturing. Taiwan and India's bilateral trade reach $10 billion in the fiscal year ending March of this year. In just a few years, Taiwanese investment in Vietnam has quadrupled, especially in the high-tech electronics sector with Foxconn, Wistron, Pegatron and Quanta planning to expand their operations in Vietnam. Data from Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs shows that Taiwan's foreign investment in the first half of this year reached a record high of $24 billion, up 169% year-on-year. The data also shows that Taiwan's foreign investment in the first half of this year surpassed the total of all of last year. Investments in Southeast Asia and other new southbound countries have increased significantly with the number of newly approved projects and total investment amounts growing by 63% and 113% respectively.
Taiwan's Ministry of Economic Affairs stated that the explosive growth in foreign investment in the first half of this year was largely due to the approval of large-scale overseas investment expansion plans by Taiwanese companies, with semiconductor giant TSMC playing a major role in building semiconductor chip factories in the US and Japan. TSMC increased its US investment by $5 billion and its Japanese investment by $5 billion. Moreover, in the first half of this year, the ministry approved 147 investment projects by Taiwanese companies in new southbound countries, a year-on-year increase of 63%, with total investment amounting to $4.5 billion, a 113% year-on-year increase. Meanwhile, the ministry approved 176 Taiwanese investment projects in mainland China in the first half of this year, down 1.1% year-on-year with a total investment of $1.5 billion, a 19% decrease year-on-year. As for why Taiwanese businesses are accelerating their departure from Taiwan, Xu Chen Wen, executive director of the Taiwan Business Association told Radio Free Asia that the Chinese government's newly released 22 anti-independence measures are not the primary factor. He explained that Taiwanese businesses generally avoid discussing politics on the mainland, even when working for foreign companies stationed there. He said, in my opinion, it's not a major issue and hasn't had a significant impact. Su analyzed that the U.S.-China trade war is influencing Taiwanese businesses that rely heavily on the U.S. market to leave China and invest in Southeast Asia, with some returning to Taiwan. The goal is to avoid product sanctions, he explained. All Taiwanese businesses, including foreign companies, go where they can make profit. For some electronic sectors, cheaper labor elsewhere might prompt investment in other regions. Assistant Professor of Finance of Economics and Southern Taiwan University of Science and Technology, Chu Yuan Cheng, agreed. He stated that the lack of profitability is a main reason for the exodus. After the U.S.-China trade war, many regions imposed tariffs on Chinese goods, combined with low local consumption, causing many foreign investors and Taiwanese companies to leave. The 22 anti-independence measures also have a certain impact, he added. Chu said, China can now monitor your comments on social media. Even if you don't speak out openly, it's possible that any comments made in private on social media could be interpreted by China as having pro-independence tendencies, which is a cause for concern. The departure of Taiwanese businesses not only affect China's economy, but also serves as a deterrent to the CCP's effort to unify Taiwan by force. Forbes reported that as Taiwan's trade and investment in Southeast and South Asia grow, those Asian nations will have more at stake in Taiwan, making them more likely to resist any destabilizing actions by the CCP. While these countries may not deploy military forces to counter Beijing's repeated threats to seize Taiwan, the broader collision of national interests makes Beijing's stance on Taiwan increasingly precarious. (laughs) 